house. Uh -huh. What is up guys, it's Meg Man Chief Fan here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a book discussion video. Now, I haven't done one of these in a long while, but I think I'm going to do these instead of uh, wrap-up videos because uh, I'm just going to give my basic thoughts on them, even though practically this is going to be the same as a wrap-up, but I'm not going to show everything I should write in July. I'm only going to show you the ones I really have a thought on. So, the wrap-up video is dead. I'm going to do a lot more book rants and... Uh, discussion videos in, in its place so yeah why wait in or why wait for these books when we can get into this all right the first two books are Stephen King books one of them is pretty big one of them is pretty small and the first one is Carrie by Stephen King uh I love this it's I I love this so much this is great this is about a girl named Carrie who has psychic powers and then she makes prom something else. And that's when things happen. So, yeah, this was much better than I expected. I thought, oh, this is Stephen King's first novel. It's not going to be as good. No, it is amazing. It is, it's great. It's one of his best. Even though I said all my good reviews, it really isn't one of his best. But now letting it sink in, it is one of his best novels. I, I personally put this on par with The Shining. I'm dead serious. I like this just as much as The Shining. Even though technically The Shining on a critical standpoint is better, but eh, that's just uh, that's just my opinion. But Carrie, I love this. I love this book so much. There's so much packed into this shorter book. It's really short and my goodness is the text ginormous. The, that is ginormous text. So Carrie, I r the characters are just haunting, and the story is gripping, and oh, hold up, I have to talk about something real quick. Oh yeah, and the writing's great because it's Stephen King. There was a scene in this book that scared me, and not to say, Ooh, I'm gonna get a little shiver down my spine, uh, boo-boo, where's the picnic basket? <laughs> but, uh, no, it's just, uh... It terrified me. I, I still have scars in my brain from the scene. I'm not going to say what scene it is, but all I'm going to say, it's not the prom scene. It's something to do with Carrie's mother. So, yeah, I'm just... So if you want to take a while... Oh, no! So if you want to take a wild guess in the comments below, go right ahead. But, yeah, Carrie by Stephen King. Absolutely love this. I cannot recommend this enough. In fact, this would be... This and Mi this or Misery would be a great place, starting place for Stephen King, so, yeah. And the next book is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. This, for, at first, started out brilliantly, but about halfway through it, it just became way too long and just dragged out. And honestly, all the horrors and elements of it was just kind of meh. There were still some good elements in the second half. It just wasn't that good, but it's still a good book. I, I enjoyed it. It's not one of his classics. I certainly would not see myself reading this again for a long time. But, yeah, Salem's Lot. I'm glad I own it. I I really have not many thoughts this, on this book. But, yeah, I just want to get it out here because I do want to talk about more Stephen King because everybody needs Stephen King in their lives. So, yeah, I'm Salem's Lot. It's vampires in Maine. Because everything by Stephen King is located in Maine. Alright, the next book that I'm going to talk about is For Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay by Alana Ferrente. Alana Ferrente? I don't know how to pronounce her name. I say it differently each time, but then I saw Well Done Books pronounced Alana, and I'm like, alright. <laughs> um, I was severely disappointed by this. I really like the first two books. Like, the first two books I used to have 5 out of 5 star ratings to, but then I bumped it down because after reading, like, not giving... Because, let me talk about the first two books real quick. The first two books, why I bumped down their ratings is because Never Let Me Go didn't get a 5 out of 5. Middlesex didn't get a 5 out of 5. The Fountainhead didn't get a 5 out of 5. Infinite Jest didn't get a 5 out of 5. And if those books did not get a 5 out of 5, that clearly had more of an impact on me overall, then the first two Neapolitan novels cannot have that 5 star rating. So I immediately, after reading Middlesex and being blown away by it, but then kind of thinking and sitting there like, yeah, this isn't a 5 out of 5, I just demoted those two books from their 5 out of 5 rating because they don't have that great of a lasting impact, and I blame the third book. This isn't all that good, guys. I It's all right, I guess, but it's definitely a flat 3 out of 5. Things are getting worse for the series, and I am terrified to read the last book because... 
I've heard it is the best one out of the series, but at the same time, I've also heard so many people with similar tastes as me say it's extremely anticlimactic. So, yeah, th those who leave and those who stay, they're ruining characters, they're ruining the story, it's now becoming a cheesy romp, like a, like a soap opera type of thing. I, I'm not really the biggest fan of the later half of the series, guys. Like, I love the first book. I love it. The second book is still really good. Like, it's a four out of five. I mean, it's really great. But this book just, just, uh, no, not thumbs down, but just still, just kind of like, eh, more than anything. All right, the next book is A Plain Song by Kantaroff, and yeah, this was great. Uh, not great, but it is good. It is good. This is about, like, this is like interlocked stories between, like, a pregnant teenager, two kids on the run while their mother is sick, and a high school teacher. Or, like, is it a high school teacher? Yeah. I'm really sure it's a high school teacher. So, yeah. And also, oh yeah, and also, like, uh... These two elderly farmers, which kind of tie in with the pregnant teenage girl story. So, yeah, that that's good. And this book is really good. The only problem is this would have gotten a 4 out of 5 or even higher if it wasn't for the arc about the high school teacher. Because the high school teacher, like, the story arc about the pregnant teenager, which was the one that got the most attention, I absolutely adored that story arc. Like, that was, like, near 5 out of 5 quality story arc. The one about the two kids on the run was really good as well, but not as interesting as the pregnant teenager. But then this high school teacher just... It doesn't get enough focus in this book. If this book was about, like, like a hundred pages longer and they dedicated more time to it, I can definitely see this. Or they could just omit that story arc because it really doesn't do much. It's just the only way that that story arc ties in with this uh, with the other two arcs is that the high school teacher is the, fa is the father of the two boys on the run. So that's really it. Other than that, it just, like, gives more depth to the community, which really wasn't that amazing to me. I wanted to know more about, like, uh, Victoria, which was the pregnant teenager, and, uh, just the two boys on the run. I think their name was Bobby and Ike. Yeah, Bobby and Ike. So, yeah. Playing song. If it sounds good to you, check it out. I really, I really like this, and I'm planning on picking up the sequel. That's how good it is. Okay, this next book, I have to give an apology to this book, because I reread it just thinking, because I, this was the book I read before book two, but then I just read it, eh, let's give a novella a try, let's, and then I decided, oh, let's reread that novella. Guys, it is so much better on its second read. Like, I always thought, eh, this book is good, but it's not amazing. It's amazing. It is amazing, guys. Just like, oh my goodness, just Read this enough praising. Animal Farm by George Orwell. Ah! Oh my goodness, Animal Farm is amazing. I, I, I was so, I felt like I was blind on my first read because I did not realize how amazing this book really is, how funny this book really is, how just dramatic this book can be, how, just like, it's so so good and that it ties it and it ties itself in with the Russian Revolution and it's just it's so great it, it really is so great Animal Farm like if I were to sit here all day I'd just be ranting like oh my god no they're gonna all animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others but like I just I know why some people like Ariel Bassett call this their favorite book of all time. Because now it's become my favorite, not my favorite book of all time, but it's not now my favorite novella. Sorry, Solinger. Animal Farm. Read it. Now! Alright, the next one is quickly becoming one of my favorite memoirs of all time, and that is Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt. Uh, I tried to read this back in May and wasn't really getting into it, but then I started reading this in early July, Oh my goodness, I finished it in one day. It was so good. It was so amazing. And yet, here's an interesting fact about me. Irish literature... I know this isn't literature, but this is this book is from Ireland. It's Irish. But Irish literature and just Irish books in general don't really click with me that much. Twice! <laughs> uh, but that's just an example. But also, um, who else? like I love Beckett and Wilde. But, like, W.B. Yeats, I never really got into. He's a poet. Uh, 
Um, who else is there? Uh, George Bernard Shaw. That's another person I never really got into. And of course, Joyce, which... <laughs> but Angela's Ashes, this is a great book. This is a great book. Guys, like, ah! Uh, this is about Frank McCourt's childhood during, like, the, kind of like the Catholic Protestant battles between, not battles, but, like, kind of like conflict between Ireland and Britain as a, a kind of like a religious, not religious war, but religious. What's the word? Conflict. So, <laughs> yeah. Angel's Ashes, it's beautifully written. It truly is one of the darkest. It's the, with the exception of Night by Ellie Wiesel, this is the darkest memoir I've ever read in my entire life. But yet it's brilliant. I cannot recommend this book enough. No warning. Like I said, it's extremely dark. So if you're not into that type of thing, I wouldn't check out this book, but other than that, go read it. It's a four and a half out of five from me. All right, the next book I'm just going to breeze over real quick because it's, it is a, it is good, but I don't have much to sp speak about it. And that's The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Eric Larson, this book is really good. I loved, I really thought it, this was great. It's a four, four out of five stars, but I wouldn't be, but let me just say this. It's, it's, it's. It's about the Chicago World's Fair in 1893, and it's also about H.H. H. Holmes, which is the first serial killer in America, and how those stories, like, collide with each other. And this is a nonfiction book. I'm not usually into nonfiction, but Eric Larson is just a great author. I'm planning on reading, what was that book called? The, the Dead Wake? Wh whatever the one about the Lusitania is. So, yeah, The Devil in the White City. Really happy I read this, because it was amazing. And then finally, we have an author that I've just been really into lately. I'm loving his work, and that is Shakespeare. The first one is Julius Caesar. This is the book that made me realize, yeah, Shakespeare is great. This, like, at first, like, for the longest time, I thought Shakespeare, I always loved Hamlet. I thought Hamlet was a fantastic play, but, like, Macbeth never did anything to me. I think Romeo and Juliet is one of the worst plays ever written. And Taming of the Shrew wasn't that good. Um, Othello was pretty decent. And M A Midsummer Night's Dream was good, but just not amazing like Hamlet was. This is amazing. And then I also read King Lear, which was also amazing, which I really should have brought out. <laughs> but I've read King Lear as well. And this, oh my goodness, this this no made me realize that his histories are definitely for me. The next history I'm going to read is Richard III, but Julius Caesar just had to be my first history, guys. It had to be my first history from Shakespeare. It's just, I know this isn't entirely true. This is not true very much at all, but it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so tragic, and yet it's also just gorgeous. I, I, loved, I loved the language in this book. It really just clicked with me. It just flowed like a river. I was about to add an adjective there, but that was pointless. So it flowed like a river, or like a majestic river. There's the adjective I was looking for. Uh, Julius Caesar, this is about Julius Caesar, and his time as emperor, and then after he dies. So, yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but seriously, if you haven't, if you don't know the story of Julius Caesar, just no. No, 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 no. No. So, Julius Caesar, I love, I love this play. Twelfth Night, not so much. <laughs> this book just didn't click with me. This this play just didn't click with me, sorry. But it's just... It just was a more royal version of A Midsummer Night's Dream. But everything that made A Midsummer Night's Dream good was missing out of this one. I don't know. But recently I read another comedy that I loved. In fact, today I read a comedy that I loved from Shakespeare. Which I'm not going to say. I'm going to save that for later. If you want to know it now, check my Goodreads. So, Twelfth Night, it just wasn't for me. It had to deal with the, oh, what was it, like, mistaken identity thing and love. Like, I realized that com the Shakespeare comedies were not going to be clicking, clicking with me as much as, uh, like, the tragedies and histories. And this play just kind of solidified that. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not the biggest fan of this. Like, the characters are really forgettable. The story is all right, but it's... Well, also pretty forgettable. And the language, while great, it didn't click as well with, like, Julius Caesar or Hamlet or King Lear. So, yeah, Twelfth Night, not the biggest fan. 
And that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment down below on what you guys have read recently, and maybe we can start a discussion about one of these books. And also, you may give me a recommendation or so, because I'm always looking for something new to read. So anyway, I'm Mega Man Chief Fan, and I'll see you later, guys.